Hey guys, so in today's video we're going to be going over file uploads and we're going to be breaking this up into two parts. In this video we're going to be setting up the back end portion and then in tomorrow's video we're going to be setting up the front end portion and actually upload the image. Now before we actually get into doing stuff with the back end, I will got some nice suggestions in the comments that I wanted to share with you guys. So the first is when we did the create listing higher order component and uh, this big GraphQL call that we were making. Um, I talked about how the import to React was not needed and yet we needed it. So you guys suggested using the slash add a comment and do the at TS ignore here. So if I get rid of that, see it says I have to use React. Um, but if I put it back, it now says, so just that's one way you can uh, get rid of that warning. And now I don't have to do that little hack that I was doing where I use one of the React variables and we don't really need it at all. Secondly, I renamed uh, the interface that I was using. So this was called like new props create listing. And one of you guys recommended renaming it to with create listing. Basically same thing as this with a capital W. I like that a lot. Reason being it now matches the name over here so it makes a lot of sense and it's very easy to remember what the name of the interface is gonna be. So I went ahead and just uh, rebuilt as well and then changed the um, uh, the import over here in the uh, website. So source modules listing in the create, uh, I, uh, we're now using with create listing instead of that. So if you want to, you can make these. These are not really gonna change the code at all, but they're just some changes that I like, just uh, the quality of the code. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with backend changes now. So I was thinking a lot about how I want to do file uploads with this. And right now, currently what we're using for our server is GraphQL Yoga. Now GraphQL Yoga uses the Apollo server. Um, so that's these guys over here and uh, under the hood. So GraphQL Yoga does some things to make it a little bit easier, but they're using Apollo server under the hood. Now Apollo server recently came out with a new version, Apollo server 2 and it came out with file uploads. And so here's an article or a guide or on their docs of how you can actually do file uploads directly with uh, Apollo, or at least Apollo Server 2. And now one of the things that GraphQL Yoga has built in is uh, file uploads too. So we could either do file uploads with GraphQL Yoga, or we could switch over to Apollo Server 2 and do file uploads with that as well. Now, GraphQL Yoga has not upgraded yet. They're just using Apollo Server 1. Um, but I assume at some point they are going to upgrade to Apollo Server 2. So what I'm thinking right now is just to continue using GraphQL Yoga instead of switching it out for Apollo Server. If you want to, you could. It's probably not that big of a change to make. Uh, but for now, we're going to be using GraphQL Yoga still. And we'll just let the, ma the maintainers of this library upgrade it to Apollo Server 2. Um, and then we'll be using Apollo Server 2 under the hood through GraphQL Yoga at that point. Now they have a nice example on GraphQL Yoga of how to actually use uh, file uploads. It's here, so if you go to uh, the examples and then file uploads, so right here, examples, file upload, you can see the index.ts and that's how I get to it. So we're gonna be adding this code to our uh, backend right now. So the first thing they do is they have their type defs and they add a scalar upload. So we're going to copy that. And I'm just going to add that to my listing over here. So I'm in the schema.graphql. So this is over on the server, modules listing create. And then you'll notice there's this special file object or file type. Um, that's specified right here, so I can copy this if I want to and paste it here as well. And now anytime we want um, these, and actually uh, I just saw what this file is doing. They're returning a file, um, but we don't actually even need to return a file, so I'm not even going to import this type because we don't need it. What we care about is just taking a file as a parameter. So that's, we use the upload type that we just said was a scalar. So we're gonna add to our create listing input. So this is 
the form input. So whenever we call this mutation, we pass in all this data. We're also going to include a picture. And we're going to say upload, and it's going to be required. Um, actually, let's make it not required. That way I don't have to upload a picture every time if I don't want to. So now over here, I now can take as one of my parameters to input over here is uh, the file or the picture. So I'm going to say input, and I'm going to destructure it. And I'm going to say picture. And I'm going to say dot, 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 data. So now data is what we're going to pass into the create still here. But the reason why I didn't just feed input right into create here is because I don't want to pass picture to the database because this is a uh, file object and we don't just uh, save the file object to the database. And you'll see they have other their little example right here. They have a function called process upload. So we're going to do that. I'm going to just copy this whole bit right here, the process upload and the store upload. So we don't care about this record file bit, so I'm going to get rid of that part. Now in our resolver right here, we can do whatever we want with this picture object. So for example, we could upload it to Cloudinary or AWS S3 um, or save it to our local computer and then we have the name of this picture or the ID of the picture and that's what we're going to save to the database in this picture URL. So the first thing I'm going to do or the first way I'm going to do this is just to save this to my computer. So whenever someone uploads a picture we're going to have like a I guess like a picture folder or something or a file folder and we're going to have the pictures uploaded there. Um, Alright so let's, let's, let's do that. So we're just going to call process upload on this picture and we're going to say const picture URL is equal to oh wait and then we just put picture URL here so now we're going to get we're going to make some changes to the process upload so that way it takes this picture and it returns a picture URL for us so this guy I actually don't really know what the type um, of it is specifically uh, so I, what I'm going to do is just give it the type any now they await it and get the stream file name all this jazz and then they upload it and they get an ID um, so let's look at how this store uploads working that's right here so this is what's actually storing it to the local file system so here they're taking the stream and the file name Again, we're going to say this is anything. Uh, they're using short ID to make an ID for this. I actually like that idea, so I'm going to go ahead and install short ID. So I'm just going to go over to the server and I'm going to say yarn add short ID. Now, this library, what it does is it just generates, I believe it's five characters long. It looks like an ID that likes looks like that or something. And here we can specify our upload directory. I'm going to just say pictures, or we could say images. And so I'm going to create a folder in the server folder called images. And I'm thinking they'll go there. I'm thinking this will be like the relative directory will be right there. And then we'll have the ID dash the file name. I actually don't even know if I want to keep the file name so the file name will be a user uh, uploaded so like for example if I have a picture on my computer called um, house.png file name when I upload it to the server the file name here is going to be house.png now do we want to uh, include house.png so like if we did this what this path would be uh, would be like that slash or dash PNG. So this would be the unique URL or unique name that we give this image. So it's a combination of a unique ID and then that bit at the end. I don't know whether I want to keep that or not. I think for now I'm just going to kill it and just use a short ID. And I'm seeing short ID still mad. So what I'm going to do is also add 
the types for it. And I'm going to control C that. Reason for that is I forgot to push dash D because I want to install it as a dev dependency. All right, so let's go ahead and import. All right, and now what we're doing here is uh, I think I don't know where create write stream is coming from. Um, Okay, so it's just the file system. That should be a just a node module. So this is not like a third party package we have to install. This is just something that just comes with node. And so I'm gonna get rid of this because we're not using the file name right now. We could if we wanted to. We might change this later. And yeah, so and at the end we're just resolving. The thing I really care about is the uh, ID here. So I'm going to return that in process upload. And I'm not going to uh, do anything with the path. And we can get rid of those because we're not using them either. All right, so this looks good now. So I am getting this picture URL. And the picture URL really is just going to map to a ID. So the ID might be that. And we'll be fetching that picture URL through Express, uh, which we'll go over. Uh, when we actually get to fetching users or fetching the pictures. Uh, anyway, so that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.